Hey, so recently I was working on quite a critical TypeScript backend and I wanted to look for a library that had things like observability, error handling, and all of that built in. And this is where I found this library that is calling itself Next Generation TypeScript. And it aims to make TypeScript more composable, reusable, and testable. Now, I think this one is going to be a love it or hate it one with some strong opinions on it. If you come from a functional programming language like Scala, you may love this one, especially if you were just thrown into the web development world. If you have more of a JavaScript background, Ground, it may look a little bit daunting at first, but stick around to hear the rationale behind this library, as well as my thoughts on using this library for a little bit. Now, the library I am talking about is Effect, and as I said at the start, they say they are next generation TypeScript or production ready TypeScript. So let's take a look. So let's look at that documentation here quickly before we jump into some of the code to see what they are about. Now, as you can see, it says the best way to ship faster in TypeScript, build robust apps, handle errors. It says it's got maximum type safety, including error handling. As I said there, it's gonna make your code more composable, reusable, and testable. It's got an extensive library with a rich ecosystem of packages. So that was one of the bits I was talking about earlier. There is so many cool packages around this that are gonna replace some of the ones that you're already using. It's got clustering and workflows as well. That's in alpha at the moment. Oh, and it also says subscribe to Jolly Coding, something you should definitely do. So it's definitely a good library. Now, if we keep scrolling down here, what you can see is effect is gonna work everywhere from Dino to Bun to Node, all of that, your browser and everything. And it should work with everything as well. So it's gonna make the hard things easy here. And this was pretty much the one that sold me was this error handling, the retry and the interruption. So I'll show you this in the code a little bit later. What you can see on that website is they have a comparison of sort of how much time it should save you. Now, as you can see, it says it's the missing standard library for TypeScript as it was one of the most desired JavaScript features in the state of JavaScript survey. And it's gonna have powerful building blocks, no more one-off dependencies, never try and catch again. Now, if you didn't know, error handling is an absolute nightmare in JavaScript and TypeScript, which is why I was looking for a library like this. Now, I recommend checking out this video by Ethan that covers this, as well as going to his channel as it has a load of content on effect and some of it was really useful to me as well while trying to learn this. Now we keep going down, you can see we have some example code here for the ecosystem and all of that. So jumping into that documentation here, you can see they have a load of things like observability, scheduling, state management, batching, caching, concurrency, streaming, testing, and a load of other things. And as I said, there's an ecosystem of packages around this as well. So they have a Zod replacement called Schema, and I'm gonna use that a little bit later as well. But just to show you the core type here, and that is the effect type, and this is essentially the core of this entire library. You can see it defines a success and error and requirements, and it represents an immutable value that lazily describes a workflow or job. This type encapsulates the logic of a program, defining whether it succeeds, providing a value of type success or fails, and resulting in an error of type error. So this is actually pretty similar to a way that Rust handles errors, where you essentially have a wrapper type around it that describes whether it succeeded or failed. Now, all of this documentation is going to look a little bit daunting. So let's look at the code that I was actually writing using this effect type. So here I have the normal way without effect that I would do this. So what you can see is we're doing a fetch request to the Pokemon API here with a get Pokemon function. And we have the type that describes sort of the structure of the data we're getting back here. We have a limit on the amount that we want to use. And then we also have this union of what we could get back from this function as we can get back an okay result, which means result here is just going to have the data we got back from that API. Or we could also have some errors and then these errors are invalid JSON. So if the JSON parsing has gone wrong or just a whole catch on whether the request failed itself like so. So you can see here that this doesn't actually look too bad. But now what if I wanted to add in some logic for timing out this API if it takes more than a second, for example, to hit that endpoint? Another one we could do is what if it does hit that timeout and I want it to retry. So maybe go three retries before actually calling an error. And then what if I wanted to add some observability in here as well? This is where it's going to start to get a little bit complex and you're going to get a function that looks a little bit like this. So this is the same function here, get Pokemon, but we've added in some retry logic here with retries three, retries base delay and a signal. And you see it just gets way more complex. In here we have an execute. You have to do some set timeout stuff on the abort signal we have to do the fetch here and then you can see it's an absolute jumble of sort of try catch blocks here we've got a try catch there a catch there a try catch 
sort of everywhere and just a load of different error handling that we have to do to make sure that our function is robust from sort of any errors and we know what's going to go wrong with it. Well, we can do this in the effect way now. So if I come in here, the first one we're going to use is actually the schema package from effect. So as I said, this is part of the ecosystem around effect and packages that have been built for it. And schema here is essentially going to act a bit like Zod. So if I come in here and I define a Pokemon type, what I can do is I can say this is equal to schema.struct. In this schema.struct, I'm going to have a name, which is going to be a schema.string. And I'm also going to have a URL as well, which is schema.string. The next one I'm going to need is also the Pokemon type itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Pokemon schema like so. That's going to equal to a struct here. We're going to have a count, which is going to be the schema.number. And this here, I'm just defining the data that's coming back from my API. And obviously, I know what that is. We're going to have a schema, which is going to be a null or a schema.string. We're going to have a previous as well, which is going to be the exact same. And then we're also going to have results here, which is going to be an array of that Pokemon struct that I set up earlier. So now that we've got our Pokemon schema, we're going to want to go ahead and run our get Pokemon function or create our get Pokemon function. Now you can ignore this bit here as I've essentially just set up some boilerplate for making sure I can run this quickly. But we can also define our Pokemon type first, which for that we're going to do schema.schema .schema here. And we're going to have the type dot Pokemon. Make sure we close this off with brackets. What this is doing is essentially just converting the schema back to the actual type and getting that out. So you can see here when we hover over this, we just have that type of count, next, previous, and the structure of our data. So now let's use that get Pokemon function. So if I define a get Pokemon here, we can have a limit of 10. And this is where we're going to use this effect type. So we need to define what the success value is going to be. For me, that's just going to be the Pokemon type. That's what I'm expecting to get out of this effect if it all goes successfully. I'm going to have a few errors here. One of them is going to be a HTTP client error if something goes wrong. I'm going to have a timeout exception. That's for if the timeout goes wrong. And then I'm also going to have a pass error here. And that pass error is going to be for if my JSON passing has gone wrong. So now in this function, I can begin to use some other things provided from the effect ecosystem as well. And one of them is this HTTP client request get here. This one is coming from the effect platform package here. And what this is, is just some abstractions on top of things like the terminal, the file system and HTTP client there, which means it's going to work on every runtime. Cool thing about this as well is if you're building for a specific runtime in the end, what you can do is switch this out for the platform package of your choice. So that can be platform dash bun, platform dash node, or as I said, you can just use this library here, which is an abstraction on top of it. So it works in all of them. Once we've got that, we can use the pipe function now because we're getting back our data from this get request. So we're going to do a dot pipe. With this dot pipe, what we can say is HTTP client dot fetch OK. So that's the next function that it's going to run. It's going to go ahead and fetch it. And if it's OK, what we can do is we can do HTTP client response here dot JSON like so. So now we've got our data in a JSON format, but it's worth noting this is still going to be of type unknown at the moment, as that's what happens when you do a fetch. You can't actually describe what's coming back from that API. You have to then do some decoding on that data. Now that we've got that, what we can do is we can say we can want an effect with a timeout of one second. So this here, as I said, if my API is taking a little bit too long, I can make it timeout with one second there. Now this would throw a timeout exception, except what if I wanted to add in my retry logic? So for that, we can do effect.retry. Then we can do a schedule.exponential, and then we pipe that here, and then we make sure it recurs three times. Then after all of this, we can begin to decode this data. So for that, we can do effect.flatmap, and then we do schema.codeUnknown Pokemon schema here. So that's going to pass in the JSON that we got from up here and back from our request, and that's going to decode it into our Pokemon schema type. And now finally, to add in the observability, it is all built in, and I can do something like this. You're probably going to want to name this something like get Pokemon here, just so you know where it's coming from. But now you can see that we have a span here, which is a observability thing. And then we have get Pokemon, and then we have our attributes with our limit. So there we go. This is how in effect we can do a get request with all of these extra features like a timeout and a retry. And this is actually a really small amount of code for what we just did there. And we also get the observability built in with the effect library as well. You can go ahead and see this was 80 lines of code in the way you would have written it before with all of these timeouts and all of these catch for the errors. And in effect, we've got this down to 50 lines of code to run the program. So now that you've seen a small part of what effect has to offer, 
What was my conclusion on all of this after using it to build out a TypeScript backend? Well, I love Effect and everything it's trying to do and everything it's already solved in the ecosystem, but I've barely scratched the surface of the ecosystem, which is sort of the problem with Effect. Well, it's not too much of an issue of the code itself. That's all really well written. It's just going to take you a lot of time to investigate this library and the ecosystem. And a lot of it is going to be using patterns that you're not familiar with when you're sort of in the normal JavaScript world. This isn't great for developer velocity, even though if you do invest the time to learn Effect in depth, I'm sure you'll become a more productive programmer and probably a better one as well as you're making sure you're catching all of those errors. Now, they make no secret of this on their website. Over here, if we just scroll down, you're going to get to a section called what's the catch. And it tells you there is going to be a learning curve and it's a different programming style. And then also the extensive API surface, which I also struggled a little bit as well. When you're writing out your code with effect, you're always wondering, is there an API that can help me out with this that I don't know about? And I also think that that documentation isn't perfect yet. Now, to show you an example of this, if I go to the docs, one of the ones I struggled with was something like schema. So I thought schema was sort of built into effect, but it's not, it's an extra package. But then I still sort of expect to find the documentation somewhere on the website. But if you search schema, you're just going to get the API reference and then also the blog posts about schema being released. So if you do want to get to the documentation, you may have to go into one of these blog posts or the way I went into it is I searched again for schema. Then I found that API reference link. And then in here, there's a getting started link. And then this is where the documentation for schema was. I just found that a little bit confusing and also a little bit confusing to know whether something was part a package and part of the ecosystem or whether it was inbuilt into the effect library. So that there is going to be the main problem of effect. Now, it might not be an issue for you or if you're working on a personal project, but if you're working with a team in a company, it is sometimes quite hard to tell your manager that you all need to go learn effect to make your application more robust and better in the end. Now, while it will have that outcome, as I said, sometimes it's just hard to get this across to a manager. And also if you have new hires or something like that, they're always going to have to be trained up on effect. And I think you're probably going to end up with that effect master at your company and a few others learning from him. And especially if that guy leaves, you might create a bit of a problem. Now, my other issue as well is I wouldn't really want to use this on the front end, even though it would work there. I just think it's a way different pattern from, especially if you're writing React from doing use effect and a load of other things. And I mean, to be honest, that might get confusing with that name there. And also this would stop me using it on the back end as well for that specific application, because I like my front end and back end to have a sort of similar code style. So it's not too much of a context switch when I'm going between them, especially if I'm building out something like a website or something like that. So there we go. Let me know your opinions on this library in the comments down below. I'm sure there's going to be some strong opinions on it. Some of you may think this is sort of the holy grail missing piece of TypeScript and JavaScript development, and others are going to think this is over confusing, overwhelming, daunting, and would just hate to see this in a code base. And hey, since you made it to the end of the video, why not go ahead and subscribe? Check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like. And as always, happy coding and see you in the next video.